welcome to Liberty Park Music. I'm Michelle Huang, your piano instructor. So far, we have learned about the major five finger patterns and chords beginning on the white keys. In today's lesson, we will talk about the major five finger patterns and chords beginning on the black keys. We'll then look into several short exercises and pieces that will use these different five finger patterns and chords. Just to review, a major five finger pattern, it's a series of five notes having a pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, and whole step. The first note of the pattern is called the tonic. The fifth note is the dominant. We talked about the major five finger patterns beginning on the white keys. In this lesson, we will talk about the major five finger patterns beginning on the black keys. As you can see on the screen, the major five finger patterns beginning on the black keys follow the same pattern as the major five finger patterns beginning on the white keys. Take a moment, pause the video, and write out the letter names on the correct keys to form each major five finger patterns. Let's talk about how to play each of these five finger patterns beginning on the black keys. These are a bit more difficult to play simply because each pattern involves more black keys than the five finger patterns beginning on the white keys. This means that we will be playing closer to the fall board with slightly higher risk in order to move along comfortably in the black key territory. Thing that makes playing black key five finger patterns difficult is that the white keys now need to be played again closer to the fall boards in between the black keys. This takes a little bit of getting used to because we're so used to playing the white keys closer to the edge of the keys which is inefficient and awkward when playing the black key five finger patterns because the hands and arms will have to constantly slide in and out between the black and the white keys. It's much more efficient to play the white keys again closer to the fall board in between the black keys. Remember the white keys work just as well here than the edges of the keys. these five finger pattern on the page until you feel comfortable with them. the following exercise using the black key five finger patterns. Remember to play the white keys close to the fall board and in between the black keys. Left hand first. Right hand. Then hands together. upward until you reach the next D flat. Once you're comfortable with each pattern, set the metronome to quarter note equals 56, fitting two eighth notes into each click of the metronome and slowly work your way up to a faster tempo. A triad is a three note chord where the bottom note of a triad is the root, the middle is the third, and the top is the fifth. 
a major triad is just the one, three, and five of the major five finger pattern. The example shown here is a D flat major five finger pattern and the keyboard. The circle notes and keys form a triad. In this exercise, we will play each black key chord first in broken chord, then black chord, starting from D flat. Remember to drop your arms into the keys. Let the weight of your arms carry your fingers into the keys, feeling the center of focus at the base of your third fingers. You want to hear all three notes of the chord. Now go on to E flat. Next, we'll be looking at two pieces that will help you get more practice with the major five finger patterns and chords beginning on the black keys. Here, we have a short piece in the key of G flat major. To review how we determine the key of a piece is by looking at the second to the last flat of the key signature. We can confirm that by looking at the first and last note of the left hand. Looking at the notes and patterns, it looks like that both hands are playing exactly an octave apart with the same rhythmic pattern. The meter is in 6-8, which means an eighth note gets a beat. So we'll be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for each measure. Let's clap this rhythm first and count out loud. We will only do the first line since the second line is the exact repeat of rhythms as the first line. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Before we play this short piece, first play a G flat major five finger pattern to warm up. comfortable with this five finger pattern, play the entire piece and either count out loud or count in your head to keep the time. Now take a look at another piece to get more black key five finger pattern practice. Take a moment to figure out the key of the piece. Again looking at the next to the last flat and the first and last note of the left hand to determine the key. Like the previous piece we just talked about, Echoes of Scotland is also in 6-8. Looking at the piece as a whole, you will notice that there is quite a bit of repetition of rhythmic patterns. As you can see on the screen here, these are the five different rhythms that are repeated throughout. Let's clap and count out loud each of these rhythms. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do practice clapping and counting out loud each rhythm to familiarize yourself with these rhythms as they appear throughout the piece. We will start with the right hand. Do notice that in measures 9 and 10, as well as 13 and 14, we will move from a D flat major five finger pattern to a higher D flat and back. Let's play a D flat major five finger pattern to warm up. Now, let's play and count in our head. At the end of the piece, there is a marking that we have not seen before called DC alfine or de capo alfine. De capo means from the head in Italian. Alfine is to the end. This means that we get to the end of the piece, we will return to the beginning and play until we see fine, which is at the end of the second line. You will also notice that at the beginning of the piece under the tempo marking, it's a second time right hand octave. This simply means that when we return to the beginning, the right hand will play one octave higher. hand oscillates back and forth between the tonic and dominant tones of D flat major. To review, tonic is the first note of the five finger pattern. Dominant is the fifth note of the five finger pattern. The third and fourth lines here, as you can see, combine D flat and A flat to form an interval of a fifth to harmonize the melody. You can also think of it as a tonic chord of D flat major without the third. play the entire piece. Let's look at two tricky spots when we put hands together. First is in measure 6 and 7. Notice that the right hand is playing a legato melody.
while the left hand is playing repeated A flats. We will need to pick up our left hand after playing each A flat in order to restrike the same key. However, this cannot affect the right hand legato. Let's look at the different motions happening in both hands. At the end of measure 6, the right hand stays in the key while the left hand picks up. Right hand connects D flat to E flat in the next bar without picking up the hand. Left hand restrikes the A flat. in measures 9 through 14. Practice these passages slowly, keeping the right hand connected especially focusing on connecting from the last note of the previous measure to the first note of the next measure while the left hand picks up and restrikes the same keys. Now, let's play hands together. practices, remember to add in dynamics and retardando at the end. Notice that the second and fourth line are just echoes of the first and third line. In our lesson today, we have learned about the major five finger patterns and chords beginning on the black keys. Continue to practice the exercises and pieces that we have discussed in this lesson. In addition, you will find more pieces in your homework to get more practice of the major five finger patterns and chords beginning on the black keys. See you in your next lesson.